Here in Pi Process Book, I have a display built to show me everything that's going on with my mixing tank one. At a glance, I can see any inflows or outflows, what level my tank is at, and if the mixer is turned on, and I can even see my internals or even some physical properties regarding mixing tank one. So in this video, we'll go through step by step to how this display was made, and we'll create our own from scratch. So the first thing to do, like any other program, is File New. And here we get to choose three options. The first option is Process Book File, which is really just a binder that combines our display files. An entry will be the line items in our binder file. But Process Book PDI File will be our very own standalone display. So we'll click that and create a Mixing Tank 1 display. Now, the first thing to do when we're creating our own display or changing an existing display is make sure we're in build mode, as indicated by this hammer tool. To make any changes or to create new symbols, we have to be in build mode. So I'll click that and then move over to the draw menu. And here, the draw pull down will show me all the different things I can make. I can make lines and shapes and values, graphics and trends but I'm gonna start with the title, which is text. So I, I have my text tool selected now, so I'll simply click and then drop my title in as Mixing Tank 1. So now clicking away, uh, I have the Mixing Tank 1 selected, but you'll notice that I got kicked out of build mode and now I'm in run mode. So there's a default setting set in Process Book under Tools Preferences called Prefer Run Mode. And what this does is returns you to run mode after you've created a symbol. Since we're going to plan on being in build mode for quite a while when we build out our display, I'm going to uncheck that. And now we won't have to return to build mode every time we're done dropping a symbol on our display. All right, so back in build mode, let's change our title to look more like a title. So we can right click and format the color and font but we can also do it using this bar up here. So what I'm going to do is change it to make it nice and big, center it a little bit. Um, we'll make it bold, change it to black. All right, so here's our title. Uh, the next thing we'll do is draw a symbol. So our symbol library here is built into Pi Process Book and clicking on it will pull up a cursor for the, the symbol library. And what I'm going to do is drag and drop. And now letting go is going to pull up our symbol library. And we can see here our symbol library has a lot of different categories with a lot of different symbols in that category. So here's just a bunch of pictures we can use to represent our display. So to really give our display that background context for all the values on it, let's add a tank. So here's our tank. I'll just make this look a little bit better. Appropriate size there. And now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two pipes so that I can use one as an inflow and one as an outflow. So those are also in our symbol library. So I'll get my symbol icon out and drag and drop a box where we can create a pipe. Elemento P. And I'll use this horizontal one here. Now we'll get to the clipping uh, in a bit, but I'm going to copy Control C and then click down here and paste a second pipe. All right, so this one's going to be my inflow and this one's going to be my outflow. So I'm going to fix my clipping issue by clicking on my mixing tank. And then here in the arrange menu, we can select how our graphics interact with our other graphics. So what I'm going to do is bring this one to the front. And we can see here that it overlaps the pipes now. All right, the next thing we'll do is add a line. So I could draw a line, but I want you to notice that anything in this draw menu is also right here. It's just that the words aren't, uh, or the labels aren't here. So this line is obviously the line icon. So I'll use that and draw a line here. And again, we can right click and edit our settings, like color and style, or we can come up here to this 
this bar again. So I'll go, I'll make it black instead of white, and I'll add a line end to the left side. And carrying on like I did before, I'll copy and paste it. Uh, but this time the line's not facing the right way. So again in Arrange we can rotate it. I actually probably could have flipped it. And there we go. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I had a mixer attached to my tank as well as a, a logo for OSI Soft. So we'll, we'll add one more symbol from our symbol library. And so we'll add that mixer icon. And this time I'll rotate it again, but only rotating it 90 degrees. And you can actually use the arrow keys if you want to make fine movements with your symbols to get them to line up just right. And the last thing I'll do is my graphic. Now that's not actually a symbol in my symbol library, so I'm going to draw a graphic, which is also this icon here. So we'll click that, draw our graphic box, and here we can browse. So I'm going to embed something that's on my local machine by browsing for it and import this JPEG. And I'm going to choose to stretch the image bounding rectangle so that I maintain my aspect ratio. And there it is. Um, the last thing I'll do is, this isn't quite, this is kind of a, a contrast between my two backgrounds. So rather than change the background of my picture here, I can change the background of my process book display by editing the display and then changing the background color here. So I'll make it this white color from before, and now you notice that this text actually has a gray background to it. So again, clicking on the text, I can edit the background color in this bar again, right there. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove the background. So now no matter what uh, color this, this uh, title is overlaid on, you won't see any, any color box behind it because there's no background to it. So now we're ready to uh, fill in our data now that we have this nice structure for, for how our process actually looks. So I'll start by adding some values to represent some of these flows. So what we can do is click on this value icon. I'm gonna drop another box and here I get to choose the data source that this value icon is going to represent. So if you know your pie point, you can type it in there or search for it here. But what I'll do is, since I know my mixing tank 1's built up in AF, I'm going to leverage my AF attributes and search for it here. So selecting mixing tank 1 in my tree, I know that this is a flow rate in. And we'll hit OK. And now we can format it and choose if we want the uh, the pie point to show up and choose if we want the timestamp to show up. So I'm going to make sure that I only have two decimal places. And I'm going to choose to show the units. So um, I don't want to see either of these things, so I'll, I'll leave those as none. And hitting OK. We see our data here, but it's uh, we have a similar problem as before where our, our title had a background and wasn't uh, quite the right color. So again, we'll change it a little bit bigger so it shows up better. We'll make it blue text this time, and we'll actually remove the background again. And to give this even more context, let's add another text box to represent the data label. So we'll call this flow in and clicking away and then clicking back, I can drag it here and we'll make it size 16 again. This time it'll be black with no background. Um, so I can fiddle uh, trying to get these to line up properly or I could select them both and arrange, align their centers just to make sure that they're perfectly aligned horizontally here. And uh, and that's my flow in. So now it looks, it makes a lot of sense that this pipe 
represents an inflow, and I can easily see that it's 48.27 gallons a minute. Next thing I'm going to do is just copy and paste. And I'll actually be doing this a couple times. Because if you remember from the before, we had a lot of physical properties about our mixing tank one that we also need to display here. So I'm just going to copy, paste, copy, paste, and I'll copy these two and paste them. And so we can quickly build out our display using something we've already configured. So now I'll I'll just go on a go on a a configuration spree here and we'll change the flow out uh, and then change the data source for this guy. So double clicking on a value that you have on your screen will pull up the the find value screen again. So here we can go into the mixing tank one and this attribute is going to be flow out. Excellent. And now we have some other properties like diameter we have height, we have product, and we have volume. So these are also going to be different attributes of my mixing tank one. So I'll quickly change them all. Height. Product. And volume. So there's my the physical properties of my tank. And I actually forgot one, so we'll add the last mixer value. And of course that property is called mixer. All right, so now we can add a symbol that will really give us a good example of how much fluid is actually in the tank. And that's going to be a bar graph. And if we arrange it properly, it might actually look like our tank's cut away, and we can see into it and see exactly how much fluid is in it. So we'll make a bar graph, and we'll put it right here. And now this definition window is a little bit more complicated, because the bar graph needs to know what the lower value of the bar graph is, what the upper value of the bar graph is, and if you want the fluid to start at the bottom and go to the top, or start at the middle and go up and down, or start at the top and go down. So this current configuration is the start of the bar graph is going to be at the expected zero of the pi point and the expected upper value of the bar graph is going to be the zero of the pi point plus the range or the span of the pi point. And the default orientation is set to vertical rather than horizontal and we're going to see the scales inside. So let's define our data source as again from the AF tree, we'll use mixing tank one's level attribute. And now we see a level bar that kind of looks like we might have, you know, a level of fluid in this tank. The only thing we're missing from our display right now is our vital signs, and we're going to make a trend for those. So we'll click on our trend icon. Again, if you're not sure what these icons mean, we can draw and see all the words or the labels of what these symbols are. So trend looks like that and we'll draw the box for our trend. So what we're going to do is define the data sources in our trend. So we can search here and I know that we're going to use the AF attribute internal temperature and pressure. So adding those two data sources onto my, my trend definition is going to show them both side by side. Uh, trends also display names, so we'll call this internal temperature and pressure. And here we get to decide the scale of our trend. So since we have a temperature and a pressure, they're not even the same units, so we'll, we'll choose multiple scales. And we'll let process book auto-arrange the scales rather than defining them manually. And we're not really interested in a logarithmic scale or using a line of best fit, so we'll leave those unchecked. And here we decide how wide our trend should be. 
So I think eight hours between eight hours ago and the current time is appropriate. And now we can choose the display format of our trend in the second tab here. So we can choose what's in the legend and what's not in the legend, as well as what's on the trend and what's not. By default, each trend has three of these markers on it. And they're there so you can tell which color ends up with which trend element. If you check the marker icon, you'll actually see a marker for every single data point that's in the Pi Data Archive. And since that's going to be a little bit too busy for this trend, we'll uncheck that so we can see the three per, per line. Finally, we can choose the, the color and the format of our, our background and our traces. So in this tab, we'll um, change pen one, which is going to be the, the first data source. And sticking with our blue and black theme here, we'll, we'll use our blue color and uh, we'll leave the default line weight and line style. But if we're interested, we can make it dotted or thicker or thinner. Uh, pen 2, I'll, I'll make it black. And we can also choose things like what, what color text, what color background, and what color line axes and grid lines. So we'll go ahead and change the, the text to a black color. We'll change the background to a light gray. And we'll hit OK. So there's my trend set with my data sources and colored how I decided in the trend options. So this is my final Mixing Tank 1 display. So far in this video, we learned how to play static symbols like JPEGs and tank displays, as well as even labels. And we also learned how to make dynamic symbols like our values or our trend or our bar graphs. We even learned how to format and color these symbols to make the data more clear and aesthetic. In the next videos, we'll show you how to use AF to quickly scale this display to accommodate other similar tanks in the fleet, as well as maze to make your symbols react to changes in states based on your data.